Any artists out here? Pretty much everybody. So everybody. <laughs> cool. So how this is going to be laid out, what I'm going to do is, um, first I'm going to talk, talk to you guys, do some scenarios, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, like either handwriting, how you keep a journal, how you keep a process, and um, then I'm going to talk about some previous artists, some contemporary artists, and then we'll talk a little bit about my work. But first, we're going to talk about some scenarios first, okay? So, you're five, right? You and your family have went out. You've had the most amazing day at the park. You've been playing. It's been like a balmy 85 degrees. Everyone's full from the picnic you've just had. And you're like, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home, and I'm going to make a drawing to give to my family. Right? That's the first thing you do. First thing. I mean, you make everyone smile. You show it to your mother, and she goes, wow, this is phenomenal. This, this sun that you've drawn, the sun's smiling, dude, this is great. So we're going to fast forward just a little bit. So let's say you're 15, all right? You've been through some times. Things are nice. And... Um, you're thinking um, about your crush. Um, and you're like, okay, what do I do? How, how do I approach this person? What, how do I say these genuine moments to this person? And um, how, do I, how do I formulate? And, you, and the first thing that comes to mind as you're sitting there with your pencil and paper or your pen is I'm going to write them a letter. We're going to fast forward a little bit more. And you're... 25, your partner and I, like you and your partner are sitting together and you're like, all right, I'm going to make a list. We're going to go grocery shopping. That's what we're going to do. Set your list. Eggs, milk, bread. Just the basics, the usual, right? So you hand it to your partner and your partner goes, what is this? Is this eggs? Cheese? No, not cheese. Not cheese. And, but you can read it. You know exactly what it means. He's like, is this a number two beside this? No, it's not a two. But you can read it. You know if you picked up your writing or these indicators or these signifiers that you've had, that you've written down, no one else can read it, but you can read it. So these moments that you pick up, this sort of visual processing, this um, processing that came through you, which this piece of paper shows your biology, your mark making. It's a way, so far, it's become this way of like giving yourself, right? So it's interesting that that would be that what children do. And if you're like planning something, you're like, all right, let me grab a pencil and paper. You may doodle or draw, but like it may look like chicken scratch, but let's define what that is first, right? So basically, it means something totally ineligible, something that no one can really read or understand. Um, pretty much, I'm going to use it in a sentence. Um, let's say, um, oh, I'm going to be my grandmother for a second. Uh, honey, what's this? I, I can't read this chicken scratch. It looks like you just doodle all over this paper. It seems to be legible. And I would go, okay. So you work on your penmanship. So. That in of itself is awkward, right? And you begin to feel conscious about it. You begin to understand that maybe it's like, I don't know, is this right or is this wrong? But it's like you're putting something to paper using line. And then it becomes, well, it becomes drawing, right? So I'm going to ask everybody, like, what is drawing? Who can define it for me in a phrase? Yes. To move one surface across one, can you say that again? To move one surface across another surface. To move one surface across another surface. Well, you can do that with painting, right? Or, let's see, or like printmaking, lithography. You can roll across. Anyone else? Anyone else want to get, yeah? True, but you can make a line with a brush. Drawing itself is like, you're, you're picturing an image, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's drawing, but is it? Because drawing's almost completely inescapable. It's completely undefined. It's, 
when you see drawing, you're like, yeah, that's a drawing. I understand that. But those writings you're doing, those sketches you're doing, those are also drawings within themselves. They're your way of seeing these things. So Leonardo da Vinci, um, I guess everyone knows him. He's literally a Renaissance man. Um, <laughs> seeing is the most noble or recollecting and transcending notions of a noble heart, loosely translated. Because he related drawing directly to seeing through a visual correlation. Because the very first thing you do, you pick up a pencil and you need to remember it. If you're thinking of a logo, you're like, I don't know what that is. I need to figure it out. Uh, Jacques Derrida said, drawing is the hypothesis of a sight. That's 2020 vision, people would say. Yeah, like a drawing is exactly how you see it. When you do a sketch or a live sketch, you're like, okay. Uh, your instructor will go, just look at it. Don't look down at your paper, look at the object. Pay attention to it. Now, I'm just gonna breeze through along here. I just got like a five minute warning, so we're gonna breeze for a little bit, okay? So we have different types of drawings. You have different levels, like uh, Giovanni Tipolo, who did this Rococo style painting, but he also did these amazing ink drawings that leaves the eye to wonder and puts your mind in a different place. You can visually place with these small little lines how much detail is in it, right? Even though there's almost next to none. Or it can be like Gustave Doré, who his lithos were nuts. They were so tightly rendered and basically it, it looked better than life. And a lot of people think that, that a drawing or a painting needs to look better than what it is, but no, that's not the case. You can be gestural. You can have a different level of finish to it. And people can still read it, no matter what. So I'm going to talk about some contemporary artists that use drawing, um, basically for their piece. Um, Masa Bigelow used her writings in a journal to place them up on this board in this sort of voyeuristic sense. Literally, they're drawing her, like, this emotion, this spontaneity, this like this energy she had, her emotions. Her first thing she thought of when she went through these emotions in her journal was to write them down. And they were reenacting that. And she's literally in a performance, wiping them away, reading, getting rid of remarks, but also creating a line, also creating a different emotion. So Mike Cotto is another artist who also uses drawing, but in a different sort of processing manner. He makes these small drawings, places them in piles, lays them around, and see how they work visually side by side. So for instance, like you say you've ever done, like you're brainstorming, he's literally brainstorming physically in the space, placing them out, making them work in some way or some form. And arise out of that come his works. These pieces of steel and metal that's bent and silk screened over top of, that's literally a direct correlation to his, these piles that he's thinking about, how they're juxtaposed alongside each other. Oh, then you have me. So what I use, um, I also use mind maps for a way of discerning and figuring out my ways or understanding how things are. Um, it's word association, whatever comes next. How I figure something out, that's how it comes next. It, Whatever's in my mind, that's the next thing that hops up. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be an image, a symbol. And I would draw that in the next, cor like, next correlating thing. So I'll keep all of my work. I just place them up on the wall. I make something. It's on the wall. Put it down. Move it around. As many phrases and meanings. I even use different types of, well, types and different sort of fonts to play with until it can remind me of different things. Each one's a bit different. They all had, they all came out of the idea of me placing something in the space, working from a mind map, taking these scrawlings that you started with and you've placed somewhere and you've either forgotten about it and came back and go, I did not know I was writing it. Everybody's had that feeling, right? You just drew something or wrote something and you look back on it and you're like, I didn't know I did this thing, but it looks so foreign and it has such energy now. So, what can you do to have either like a better art practice or a better practice in general, right? Um, you can do live sketches. 
You can doodle. You can to make any form of sketch. What's interesting is that a lot of people, when you're making work, you're like, oh, I'm not that person, I'm not that person. I, I can't do what they do, but they can't do what you can do. Your drawings, your doodles, they're completely specific. They're at, like, it's attuned to your biology. Like the politics of what you're making is completely unique from your parents. They can't make what you make. I can't make what you make. You guys have your own sort of biology, your own process, visually. And it should be accepted. Some of you now have pencils and paper, and it's a way of processing for you guys as well. And that in of itself is a drawing that helps you formulate. So the only the real takeaway for all this is um, just draw, man. Just make stuff. And if you're having a hard time, if you're in the studio, or if you need to figure out a problem, Put pen to paper, put a pencil to paper and make it happen. Whatever comes out, you can set it aside later. You don't have to read it now. See what you write, see what you think about, see what happens next. Make as much as you can emotionally, physically, mentally until something comes out of it because something always will. Oh, and um, thank you guys, you guys have been brilliant.